whenever you're ready. Oh my God. <laughs> Jessica. I've never been called a fox. <laughs> Dana. That's a classy name for a Harry. I like it classic. Okay. Do you? <laughs> Welcome to the Rants and Raves podcast. Sure. Out with the bad and in with the good, motherfuckers. That's right. Jessica. Dana. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Good. Welcome back to the Rants and Raves podcast. I'm Dana Powell. I'm Jessica Young. Every Tuesday we come together, we just kind of rant out some of the bad and then fill ourselves up with goodness, right? That's right. Jessica, please tell people, we really need a couple of things from you guys. If you're liking what you're listening to, please rate us, review us, subscribe, tell your friends about us. But also what we need is you guys to be a part of our community. Send us in things you want us to rant about, things that bug you, things that you're proud of and you want to shout out, organizations, any of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Anything you hear on the show, weird stories you want to share, whatever. Anything you want to share with us, share with a lot of people and just not feel alone. Exactly. Please hit us up. We will always have your back. Mm -hmm. You can find us at our website, therantsandravespodcast.com, on Instagram at therantsandravespodcast. Email us at therantsandravespodcast podcast at gmail.com and twitter at raves underscore the nobody cares about twitter no they don't all they care about is not our people no they they want to hear celebrities argue with each other on twitter i think that's true is that what it's or for like now? follow sports what? in real time i don't know I'm in just, real ta- time on twitter i'm just imagining if you're at work and you can't watch a game maybe you'd watch if somebody tweeting i, I mean I don't you're know. probably right i just I don't made know, that up but... i don't know why i'm questioning you because i have no <laughs> idea <laughs> <laughs> I told you, I don't really tweet. And I just once a week, maybe look at the notifications and then go, oh, that was something cool I missed. Yeah. Right. I just hide under rocks and crochet. <laughs> my emotions how was your week it was great how about you it was good uh i have to say i had an experience that was uh, a little bit humiliating oh which is not unusual for my life let's be honest me neither but i had a friend in my car we had gone to do something together and then we decided that a bunch of us were going to go eat Mm -hmm. and so i ended up having to take one of the people now my car is quite often an embarrassment as i like to blame it on being an actor but i probably can't but we are in our cars a ton you're on the go between stuff all the time and you have a kid you have have a kid kid. you get a free pass i I honestly can't blame him yeah like if you go in my car it's not not because of him no he's pretty he's pretty self-contained i am a hurricane (laughs) (laughs) so my friend gets in my car and i instantly realize and say out loud just so that they know i'm aware which i don't know how that takes away the shame of it but somehow it made me feel better i was like geez it smells like plastic and hot garbage in here Oh, and that's exactly what it smelled. And my friend was like, oh, "Yeah." They concurred, <laughs> but I didn't have any garbage in there. It's you know what though? You could have even just like say you got a breakfast sandwich or something, and you ate it in the car. Sometimes when it gets really like muggy, yeah, then yeah, because it's been raining, it just putrefies. That's why like my husband will sometimes be like, "Why are you taking out the trash? It's not even half full." I'm like, "Cause there's raw onions and other things in there, and, and it already stinky. reeks, and yeah. I can't." Yeah. Well, and I think the reason it smells like plastic in there is Dan Tipton I think he put a dolly in there or something and so a the dolly yeah and so the wheels it smells wouldn't like wouldn't it that. be metal though yeah but the wheels have that plastic like the industrial arts when you make a screwdriver kind of smell I'm sorry <laughs> what you didn't First make screwdrivers. All, I never took industrial arts. What is that? You didn't? I'm, is that your fancy way of saying shop class? Uh, yes, it was called industrial Jessica, arts. Jessica, it is not, in, <laughs> it's not industrial arts, it's shop. It is industrial arts. I just got arts. so upset. <laughs> I didn't see that. At my middle you, school, Holcomb Bridge Middle everything School. everything fancy? Not everything's fancy, Jessica. <laughs> It was a requirement, and I really think they were ahead of the times with this. At my middle school in Roswell, Georgia, Holcomb Bridge Middle School, HBMS for life. I can't believe I just said that. I can't either. But I have very fond feelings about HBMS. It Um, sounds like a stomach condition. Go ahead. (laughs) All the boys had to take home home ec, ec, Mm -hmm. and all the girls had to take industrial arts that's not what it's called and how if the boys got theirs fancied up why wasn't home ec um uh domestic house? arts yes why not i don't know i couldn't even think of a name but you were like let me help you dana <laughs> domestic arts 
So you missed out on making a screwdriver. And I know that smell of plastic. That's for yeah, once I can strong. come back on my diatribe. It's that melting smell of plastic. And I do not care for it. I don't need to make a screwdriver. Can I tell you why? Mine. They sell them at the 99 cent store. <laughs> You are correct. That's not even time efficient. It's probably not even like supplies efficient. But I would probably pay more for the supplies of my own screwdriver than the total worth, period. Okay, well, does the 99 cent store sell wooden race cars that are powered by CO2 cartridges? I think not. I can't fight that, I guess. I made more, one on a bandsaw. Mostly I don't want to fight that it. That took off my teacher's finger. Now that's exciting. Mm-hmm. Now I'm into the story. Did I mean, you see it? I think every industrial arts teacher it's has at least cliche. one yeah. digit missing, right? Yeah. But he did. did it, like you Jerry watch it? Garcia style. No, 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 no. That would be the That would have I saw put somebody me over the edge. I had um I don't remember the names of things like you do, but I had a, a class in theater school where costumes. Theater school. Drama. Wait. <laughs> in, I got a BFA in acting. Yes. What do you call it? I don't know, but you just made it sound like you went to a class in someone's basement to learn how to do some drama expressions. <laughs> no, I was in costume class. I think there's a more professional. Costume design. Design, yeah. And I saw a girl. It was late at night. We always snuck in because we were always late for mm-hmm. getting our projects done. She full blown sewed through her finger. Oh. And we had to remove the needle. And it was like three o'clock in the morning. We had to remove the needle from the machine to take her to the hospital. And so they the could pull it out. thread was like in her finger. Oh, the needle was through the whole her thing. Fin- oh her my fingernail. god, that's went horrific. Through her fingernail. That's horrific. Yeah, it was terrible. Wow, we started off great. <laughs> Should we go ahead and get into our rants? I think we must. Honestly, surely we can go even worse. We're really rolling. On I mean, this. we're gonna get it all out. <laughs> okay, so I think it's your turn to go first on the rants today, Jess. All right. Well, I want to talk about the lack of respect for when people hit someone's car and I don't mean like a little tap we all do it myself included Mm -hmm. I've bent a few license plates with (laughs) the nose of my car (laughs) but I didn't cause much harm Uh but um, this has happened to both Alan and I very recently I had the mirror cover Uh knocked off my car clearly from someone like driving by because you cannot pull that off no I'll start with that this is so typical of me I walked outside and I see this giant plastic hub whatever it is, cover and I'm like what is this and I kicked it with all my if there's something in the street Mm -hmm. I love to kick it oh okay and like hard and like to get it out of the way from people and because I'm mad that it's in the middle of the street I honestly think that's healthy you're getting some frustration yeah yeah back to that smash room I'm still waiting for us to set that up yes I kicked it so hard because I just thought somebody had tossed plastics people throw stuff out the window all the time well we cut to the next day I'm driving and then I'm like, what the hell? And I look at my mirror and it's all like the wires are exposed and oh, no. everything else. And like, you know, when you have like that 2020, like you had your mind back. starts like reticulating and you see it all come back in real time. Uh-huh. That thing that I kicked no. was the cover to my mirror. No. And so... Of course, I ran home after work that day and was like, maybe it's still in the... It was no, long gone. Of course. I and went... ran over it because you yeah. were so rude to kick it in the middle of the street. Right? No. <laughs> I'm just I didn't even bother to see what it was. I but just kicked it because I knew it wasn't mine. you your car and not notice that your mirror was exposed? I mean, that's a very good question. Well, the actual, like, shockingly, the part that holds the mirror is unharmed. Mm. But it's like the outer case. Mm. So I leased the car. It's my first time leasing a car. Mm -hmm. And I went to the dealership and I'm like, hey, you know, I, of course, was just hoping it would be included in my lease. And the guy's like, that'll be three hundred and fifty dollars and you need to set an appointment. I'm like, I'm sorry, what? (sighs) There's no damage to the mirror. It's because... You know, I have to hear the whole spiel. They have to order the part. Mm -hmm. It's the labor I'm putting the part on, Mm -hmm. which snaps on. Right. And then they have to match the paint to the rest of the car. So I said, you know what? I'm just going to not have a cover on my mirror for For a while. while. Yeah. So annoying. Also, because it's a lease, you probably have to get it to match the paint and everything. You have to get it exactly right. Because otherwise, back home, we'd say, nah, go on out to the salvage yard, see what you can get. And then hire somebody, put it on at a smaller garage. Well, and if you owned the car, like I wouldn't care if it's a shade off. Right. You know what I mean? It's like right. it's great, it's great. Who but cares? But you're gonna have to turn it back in. Yeah. I know. I'm the same thing. I uh I accidentally 
tore the bumper off of a truck a few months ago so it messed up the whole side of my car and then somebody was like i think i told you somebody was like yeah it's already messed up i'm gonna key it for fun so so that's where i'm at but i'll tell you i get wound up about people hit and running because i've had that happen to me too when i was in college somebody backed into the side of my car and ran off like downtown on a friday night like bad it's devastating to the point that one day gosh where was i my writing partner and I were location scouting for a commercial we were Mm -hmm. making and we went to this beautiful like park area I don't remember where it was it wasn't somewhere that we go a lot and there was a parking lot and I saw a girl back out and hit another car hard right right she drives off I say I will not stand for that. (laughs) And he was like, what are you talking about? And I was like, I will not stand for it. Follow him. I'm going to take a picture of their license and leave a note on the car. And that's what I did. I took a picture of their license and then I wrote it on a note and said, I saw this car hit you. Here's the license number. And I put it on. And when I accidentally tore the bumper off of a truck, there was no one around. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't know whose car it is or where they are. I left a note with my phone number and just said, I'm so sorry. I yanked the bumper off your truck. Mm -hmm. Please call me. I'll fix it. Because that's just shitty. Right. Don't hit somebody's property and then run away. No, exactly. And nobody's, you're not going to get arrested. No. Because you had a fender bender. Somebody just did it to Alan's car when he was leaving work. And he's like, oh, it's so bad. And he's not an exaggerator. But for whatever reason, I'm like, "Eh, it's probably exaggerating. He came home and I was like, oh, they really hit it. And, you know, sometimes when it looks bad or there's white, why is it always white paint? Is it only white cars that hit other cars? I know. It's like white paint. But I had that happen once and I got my car detailed the one and only time in my life. And they literally just buffed it out. Like mm. the paint came right off. Well, this is not only covered with paint and dented, they hit it so hard and whatever part of the car scraped his, it's like down to the metal. Like oh, it God. removed the, the paint. paint. So How aggravating. How well, dare you? And it's on two somebody's... different panels. I know, but you know what they're going to tell them that he gets to repaint it. I just can already foresee thing. it. They're going to say you need to. And repaint that's why the people are car. afraid to to say it because always it's worse than what you think it's going to be. Right. And I'm so sorry. We record at my house because we are not professional. <laughs> And, and there's I, a lot of dog drama going on. I don't in the know hood. why they're so upset. They are so upset right now. I also just to forewarn you guys, because I know there are audio files out there that may hate us and you may have to stop listening. I do my best <laughs> to clean it up. But I have two of the angriest blue jays in the world. Yes. They will not stop screaming at other birds. And because I have a deflated swimming pool out there that's gathered rainwater and those <laughs> fucking blue jays are so they're such assholes about it. They don't want anyone else bathing in that. They're mean. I'm going off. I can't. <laughs> So if you're mad about our sound, I really want to apologize. And also, fuck you, neighbor dogs. Just know that I record on Tuesdays. Like <laughs> It's real life. And we're trying to be we real We literally here. had to scoot over a piston cup speedway on the floor so that Jessica could sit down in my living room. I think it's adorable. It's a made. This is a lived in home for sure. As it should be. Okay. Sorry, I got us off track. I was going to say. Nobody needs to be precious I'm, in their home. Oh, my God. I do light a candle for you. I, it smell your house always smells amazing. Thank you, Jessica. I Her bathroom it. smells like the tantalizing scent of passion fruit. Oh, everything you say is so romantic. <laughs> 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 I was going to tell you, I had a friend that got his uh, mirror knocked off and the person didn't leave. An, they did leave a note, but not their contact information. Great. But they did leave a hundred dollars. Oh. And he, part of him, he was like, part of me is like really grateful, but also it's going to cost way more than a hundred dollars. <laughs> but they just like slipped a hundy in the windshield. In the, yeah. The, in the note that they left, they folded what? it and left it and said, sorry, bud. Isn't well, that my weird? God, if nothing else, you can go and treat yourself to a nice dinner or something yeah, afterwards. Or a, or a facial. You're like, no, oh, my car yes. got beat up. I'm going to get a facial. <laughs> or a massage. Oh, yes. God. Okay, so I'm going to move on to my rant. Do it. If you're okay with that. Uh, yes. Something that will instantly make my blood boil. It's just one of those things when you're out in public and someone is on speakerphone. Nope. At a coffee shop, at a restaurant. I, I'll be honest, when I'm on speaker phone I find I can I can't hear them as well anyway exactly because it's go the sound is going everywhere and it sounds hollow and the fact of the matter is the person sitting closest to it can't hardly hear it because they're constantly going what say and why you know but I can hear every word because I'm far enough away mm-hmm. that I just want to tell them she said stop and get pepperoni because she's thinking like she feels like she wants a cauliflower crust pizza 
<laughs> can you please just hang up and text? It's so loud, but it's I so... even find that now that people can talk through the Bluetooth in their car. And oh, sometimes you can hear it I'm literally like, I'm is it a cop person. or a spaceship? But it's like, <laughs> and then I'd run, I'd run, run. It's so <laughs> it amplified. Like Charlie Brown teacher, though. Like, it wah, does. Wah, wah, wah. Yeah. Somebody used to do that and it would incense me till no one. They would pull up in front of our store and just sit there. And I'm talking for calls. not a minute or two, up to an hour. Sometimes <gasps> with their car idling, uh-huh. that's already putting me over the edge. You're just putting fumes out In there the and wasting your gut and hearing that, but literally yelling. They're not aware of it, but it sounds like yelling from the amplification. At least they're in a closed section. I know. I but it is it is but you're right. sound pollution for sure. But in a in a restaurant or a public place, do I, not. I find that people do that more and more now. More, like it's you're happening saying. more. It's really like if you and I are sitting at a coffee shop, I feel bad. And like, basically, I'm like, you'll have to go back later and listen to the sound because I feel like a creep playing something out loud in a public. No, me too. Area. I'll give somebody my earbuds. I'll say, do you want to borrow my earbuds? I was getting my nails done and a woman was sitting next to me. We were sharing a table space, right? Mm -hmm. It was two per table space. She was getting her nails done with her phone on speaker. Oh, that's obnoxious. Absolutely obnoxious. And and I was, I kept looking at the nail techs like with those eyes, darting eyes of her to them, her to them, Mm -hmm. her to which basically that's the universal symbol for why are you not stopping this? <laughs> <laughs> and eventually, because I'm a sass mouth, eventually I said to my girl, geez, that's loud, isn't it? Did the lady hear you say did, it? She didn't care. I wish she did. I don't know if she heard me or not, but she did not care. Well, I called a flight attendant a couple of months ago over to the people sitting behind us because I had had it. There was a kid. and No, I don't have kids, but I love kids and I'm extremely tolerant with uh-huh. kids acting up, screaming having a bad day whatever it is Uh this was a kid whose mom was in her own world with her phone and the kid was playing on a tablet and it sounded like a freaking casino slot machine oh it was so loud everyone on the plane is aware of it it. down a little bit turn it down yeah or the other kids had headphones Mm -hmm. all the other kids just like everyone else on the plane right and it just went on and went on and went on and i finally called over i mean i felt like so rude doing it but i called over the flight attendant and i had to the lady was sitting right there but i was not having it i'm like can i ask you a question yeah i don't want to seem like i'm not supporting you okay did you did you have headphones you could have put some music in I understand um, what you're saying. Hilarious. I no, I don't really use headphones that much. I uh-huh. read on the plane. Uh-huh. So I would like to not hear a slot machine in my ear. You can have an audio book. I just, uh, just oh. want to offer you. <laughs> I just want to offer you some some solutions. Maybe the next time someone's um, talking on speaker, you should put on your noise canceling headphones staying at the nail salon. That's at the nail salon, not an airplane <laughs> where you just said everyone else is wearing headphones. And also, I don't want to be an ass. But I edited our intro, which I hope people enjoy. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. Um, (laughs) And one of the things that I took out, but because of timing and whatever, Mm -hmm. was a soundbite of you going, I'm not normally a narc, but. (laughs) (laughs) I think it was that narc specifically you nart you nart I on did. casino plane boy i did so maybe you are a nart it's just something <laughs> to think about <laughs> But I did it in front of her. Uh-huh. So I don't know what the word would be for that. I wasn't, I didn't get up and Just go to the back of the plane narc. and whisper. Oh, I, she knew full well how yeah. I felt about it. Cause I glared at her as I was complaining to the flight attendant. And I would have been the woman across the aisle that would have looked at you with squinted eyes and been like, Just put in earbuds, lady. <laughs> Je me souviens. Huh? Qu'est-ce que c'est? I will remember. <laughs> I will remember this day. Oh my God, that is hilarious. <laughs> we just became mortal wow. enemies. We we just became mortal enemies. I know. We can't fly together ever. <laughs> Unless I have some fancy Bose noise canceling I headphones. I didn't say Bose. You're the label I, whore that here. I, that I make sure to put on before I even take off. Let me just say something real quick. We're not super. I did apologize for sound issues. I know I live near an airport. We're not super pros, right? We're a couple of ladies in LA that were like, we want to get rants and raves. I don't know why, right? <laughs> yeah. Jessica is wearing. <laughs> I have like headphones, okay? <laughs> Jessica. <laughs> Came over today. She sp- stopped posing. 
<laughs> She's modeling for me right now. The cheapest headphones. I think the actual headphones you buy on a plane are nicer than the ones they are. on your head. They are. The free ones they yes. get on a plane. Yes. The, those How much did you pay it. for those? Dollar ninety nine at Urban Outfitters. You bought them at Urban Outfitters. I didn't go there looking for them, but I drove by and it said 50% off home sale items. So I went in, they were $4.99 and then they were half off that. So why wouldn't I? That's a false sale because <laughs> I I have I would have sold you some airplane headphones for a quarter. <laughs> <laughs> It is hilarious. They do look like the early version of like a Sony Walkman. Yes, what you they're would have so gotten 80s. That. God, I miss my Walkman. I had one of those um, salmon pink submarine looking tape recorder radios. Oh. Do you know what I'm talking about? No. I'll have to show a picture of it. They were really popular. That's really cool. Yeah. Thank you. I just had the Sony <laughs> yellow Walkman. I never had a Walkman. <sighs> Our lives were different. They were indeed. It's okay. Well, we're taking it in. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was really thinking about it. Well, we both rode around in vans without seats. So yes. there's there's a commonality. There is a commonality. The difference, I think, is um, I was raised Assembly of God and you were Jewish. That's, That's right. That's probably the major difference between us. Sure. Did you have this voice when you were a baby? I did. I came out of the womb sounding like B. Arthur. <laughs> <laughs> And it just gets deeper and deeper as time goes I on. love it. I love it. Thanks. I have to tell you, I had a friend listen to our podcast at one point, and he was like, that's that's not a woman. And I had to show him, <laughs> I had to show him a picture of you. I'm not using his name because he's absolutely lovely. Literally crying <laughs> and proving my point on a daily basis. And also going, Thank you. Dina, I already know this. Why did you feel the need to share that story with me? I don't know. I just like you and wanted to support oh my god you're right it's a problem that you have is it someone that knows me no uh-uh. oh that's even funnier yeah but you know sometimes even people that that's why i don't say it's jess even though most people call me jess if they're like a close friend yeah i don't ever say it's jess because they all think i'm saying it's jeff oh interesting so i always say it's jessica and like over enunciate i say it's funny because it depends on what i'm saying to you i'm almost like the mother who like when you're in trouble i go jessica Yes. But then when I'm like, okay, Jess, you need to do blah, 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 and I'm going to do blah, blah, blah. Totally. I say, Jess, that's so weird. I treat you like my child. It's the softer of the two. It is. But I could see how someone would say Jeff. Always. I'm sorry about that, Jeff. It's okay. (laughs) What if we just start calling you Jeff from now on? What if we start touring and like the dollop? Do you ever listen to the dollop? Shout out to a lovely podcast. Amazing. Dave Anthony and Gareth Reynolds. Yes. Um, People call uh, Gareth Gary. I think Dave is the one who started it. He would just call Gareth Gary. And so when they go on tour, people shout out Gary. 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 He's like, it's Gareth. It's Gareth, everybody. It's Welsh. It's that Welsh. is so funny. And I would never picture calling Gareth Reynolds a Gary. I know, right? He's that's not really a Gary. That's really funny. He's, He's not, not a Gary. Okay, we're going to move oh, that's in. That's hysterical. I know. Also, if you like funny historical podcasts, super funny, mm-hmm. then listen to The Dollop. I love those guys. We're going to move on into something I'm going to call. I realize we have corners. We have Dana, boulevards. where have you been? Dana, where have you been? This one, I'm going to call it Shout Out Avenue, because I want to shout out somebody out. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. (laughs) I want to shout out my friend, Samantha, because she wrote our intro music for us. Very talented lady. Very talented. So Jessica knows that she and I both for weeks were like going through all kinds of music because we don't write music. I know it's shocking. We do so many things. We're so talented. (laughs) I don't play music either. I I played the oboe when I was was first chair oboe. I also played clarinet. What? And I recently bought a Kalimba. Don't get jealous. What is a kalimba? A kalimba. Kalimba. Yeah, it's an African instrument. It's like, like a, a finger thumb- harp? Yes, it's like a thumb piano. See? I haven't learned how to play it. I need to look up a five-year-old on YouTube that can teach me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, sorry, Samantha. I want to get back to you. She actually is the CEO of a company out of New York called Whatever You Say Productions. Female owned and operated. She's put together this team. I really love her. I actually co-host a podcast with her once a month called mm-hmm. When I Knew. She also has a show called Dicks and Politics. Uh, it's bro time. I think, or It's Game Time uh, is a guy's podcast Mm -hmm. about sports. Um, Microscope, she has a scientist that she hosts with. So anyway, thank you, Samantha, so much. Shout out to a New York beauty. She's an amazing
backing singer. She was on American Idol years ago. Anyway, thank, thank you, you so Samantha. much for making our music. It. W- I told her it's so fun. We were just chatting on text, and I was like, she was like, "How's your week?" And I said, "Ah, oh, I've been searching for music." She was asking how we were doing, and she was like, "What are you looking for?" And I said, "Well, I love our logo. It's got like this '80s '90s vibe. I'd like something retro, mm-hmm. but I've listened to all this." And she goes, "Something like this," and she sent me a thing. I said, "Yeah, like that. What? What is that?" She's like, "The song I just wrote for you, Jessica." It was literally three minutes that she took to make that. How do people do that? Some people just have it. I know. I'm trying to think what our talents are. Um, hair aura. Good. (laughs) (laughs) Um, My talent, um, successfully screwing up daily life. (laughs) That is not true. It is. It is. There's a lot of Well, I don't know how you do it because I told you no matter how busy you are, you always look cute and presentable and still smiling even if you're angry at the world. I just have to laugh at myself. But it's a good way to be. I think so. I'm not so good at putting on airs like that. I'm getting better because I'm like, I don't need to put this on someone else. But it's very, I mean, I'm saying it right now, feeling like a phony baloney with a fake smile on my face. No, but I can tell. I hear it. Yeah, you (laughs) can can hear it too. I think I just mess up so much. There's nothing I can do but laugh. Like you mentioned to me uh, that I had texted you, I think. About the about who. About the who. Oh, yes. <laughs> it was about the music, right? It was right? about the end of the song. You said, I'm sorry. At the end of the episode, I played the who. I'll have to cut that. I'm like, <laughs> the who? And I went back and listened to it three times, picturing that end of, uh, is it NCIS or CSI with, uh, what's his name? Dave, oh, Dan uh, Tipton Caruso. worked on Caruso. Caruso, CSI Miami. Dan Tipton worked when on that like, show. When it's like, yeah. <laughs> That's a horrible. Uh, da, 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 da. I kept I waiting for that. I wish we were that. a video. <laughs> I wish people could see you. <laughs> You took off your sunglasses and magically a guitar appeared in your hands. You know what I'm talking about when he does do. that. It's like yeah. the be at the end of the cold opening. Is that what you call it for those kind of shows? At the end of the opening of the show where he'd take off his glasses and be like, looks like I quit the yes. pick the wrong week to find out about murders. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to brag, but I'm going to. <laughs> Do it. I My backpack is a CSI Miami backpack. Oh. Because Dan Tipton works on these shows. And people that work on shows like this, they get cool swag. But they don't think it's cool because they're working on the show. Right. And I'm like, I don't care. That I've used that backpack for like eight years now. But I have a bit going with our friend Danielle Weeks. Yes. Who, she, oh, real quick shout out since I brought her up. She, uh, Danielle Weeks and Dandy Films, you can look them up on Instagram. They have a web series going to. South by Southwest yes, called that's Baby huge. Love. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I did a small part in that for her. Ooh. Yeah, I'm really proud of her. I think it's really great. So anyway, awesome. I have this bit with Danielle where I randomly send her pictures or videos of me going, oh, Danielle, this is so embarrassing. I don't know if I've told you those, but my husband works on TV shows and movies. <laughs> Look what I'm carrying. It's a water bottle from the Spider-Man movie. I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> clearly not embarrassed like <laughs> she always hates she just writes back stop it don't do this to me you're bragging you're chucking like she gets so mad it's so funny uh, oh. it's probably not as funny as the 12 minute story i just told about it <laughs> <laughs> I wish that each swag thing came with appropriate. Like, I wish that that CSI Miami backpack came with like a crime processing kit oh, or God, something. Yeah, wouldn't that be fun? Yeah, it just came with padding where you put your computer. <laughs> <laughs> Or a body part. Oh, God. I did get to tour, like, the room where they recreate all the body stuff. It was really cool. You know I love that shit. I know. Yeah, it was great. You weren't grossed out by it. No, uh uh-uh. I know it's fake, but sometimes it's... Listen, I am the person who will watch Dr. Pimple Popper. Nope, nope. And get out. Leave your own house right now. What? (laughs) While eating cashew chicken. Don't bother me. A bile just encroached on my throat from picturing that. No. Well, here's the good thing. If you spit out that bile, it won't gross me out enough to puke. (laughs) (laughs) Wait, we got off track. I distracted us with my chucking. Real. (laughs) But I said, I meant to say to you, I put the whole thing, not the who. I know. And I do things like that constantly, for example. And I know autocorrect, we all blame things on autocorrect and everybody's like, yeah, sure, you know how to spell there instead of there. But it is true. Yes. It fucks with you because I am when you're typing fast. Yes. And it makes assumptions that do not make sense. Only a computer would assume this. 
So I'm texting my grandmother, right? Mm-hmm. And I said I grew up religious. I wouldn't say I'm I'm affiliated with any specific belief, but I do have spiritual. Like if somebody's in trouble, I like to t- say to my family, hey, guys, pray for so and so, whatever, mm-hmm. right? So I text my grandma. A friend of mine was in a car accident and I texted her. What I wanted to say was, please pray for so and so. They were in an accident, blah, blah, blah. But it autocorrected. And this says a lot about what I text to people, unfortunately, because it got autocorrected and I saw it as soon as I hit sent and I couldn't pull it back. Yep. Grandmama, my friend was in a car accident. Please pussy for them. Nope. <laughs> And I froze. I literally froze. It took me an hour and a half what? because I didn't know what to say. Because I was like, does grandmama know that it assumed I wanted to say pussy? Because apparently I text pussy a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think I did. Oh. But my phone thinks I do. An hour and a half, I finally write back to her. Because she responded, of course, honey, I'll keep them, put them on the prayer list. You know, I responded, grandma. She glazed over it. I'm not sure if you noticed. That was an accident my phone accidentally changed she goes of course i noticed i knew what you meant it's fine and we didn't talk about whether or not i use the word pussy a lot in texting <laughs> oh that's a real lady can you believe it and i can't believe that she texts hello oh my grandma if you listen to i was on another podcast before absolute worst podcast that we had a neva's corner where we just apologized to my grandma for everything we did wrong Aww. my grandma is the coolest she's on facebook she's on, i had to hide the podcast from her because it was inappropriate she'd be offended yeah but she was a celebrity on there she just didn't know it that's so cute (laughs) but nobody wants to ask their grandma to pussy anything for them uh no (laughs) but i did have to explain to my grandmother what a blow job was what do you mean explain it she didn't know what it was she had never heard of it and when the whole clinton Lewinsky thing went down i had Uh to uh explain to her i want to know what that sounded like (laughs) (laughs) um her response was Oh, how disgusting. Oh, so your poor grandpa didn't get blowy. Uh, exactly. <laughs> oh, grandpa. <laughs> oh, my God. Unreal. Should we take a cleansing breath and head into our goodness? Yeah, let's Although do Although these it. were pretty funny. <laughs> but I need to blow out that uh, pussy we, thing. Oh, <laughs> my God. <laughs> okay, here we go. I think I'm first yeah. on raves this week. Is yes. that correct? You need to be given the last thing you just said before we go. Into I mine. know. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, then I'm going to be a go little ahead. too on the nose. Oh, it would? Mm-hmm. How does that happen by accident? I don't know. Okay. So this week I have just another good news story, which right. I think is always good for us. Uh, the title is, this is by McKinley Corbley, mm. by the way, um, from the Good News Network. And the title is, when grocery store accidentally leaves doors unlocked, honest customer leaves $5 for tomatoes, which I think is amazing. What? <laughs> okay. When a grocery store accidentally left their doors unlocked during a national holiday, somebody lost their job. Uh, <laughs> for real, the, That wasn't in the article. <laughs> but their shop <laughs> Shoppers reacted with nothing but classic Canadian. Oh, of course, Canadian. Mm-hmm. Your husband's Canadian, right? So am I. Yeah. <laughs> You're one of those people that you are from wherever you need to be at the moment. You're like, I was raised I, in Atlanta. I, I'm from Canada. I, I was born in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. And how yes, long were you there? Three years. And how long were you in Atlanta? Until I left for college. Okay, great. <laughs> Where else have you lived, Jessica? Tus- just... Tuscaloosa, Alabama. I'm going to have to get out a fucking map for all in the Los Angeles. In the military. No. Why'd you move so much? <laughs> I shouldn't ask that. One time I asked a kid, and there was a kid in high school that said he moved around a lot. And I, because I was a jokester all the time, mm-hmm. I was like, why? Was your dad a drug dealer? His face gets so serious. He's. Like, I wish you could see your face right now. so horrible, I'm sure. <laughs> he was like, Dana, yeah, actually, he's in the federal prison. That's why I live here. Oh, God. And I cried. <laughs> I legit, and then he had to comfort me. I couldn't have been more of a multi-layered asshole. (laughs) By the way, I love that that's where your mind goes. You moved around a lot. Most people immediately think military or one of the parents. Yeah, drugs. What was he a drug dealer? I mean, I lived in the Midwest. It's the capital of meth. Um, Was it? It is, I think, still. Are you sure it's not Fresno? No, no, I'm not sure, but I don't believe it. (laughs) Go to Fresno and we'll talk. Don't send me 
there if you think it's the worst place on earth. What's wrong with you? Okay. Uh, the Food Basic Supermarket in Kingston, Ontario was scheduled to be closed on February 18th. You're going to have to explain this to me. In honor of Family Day. Um, It's a holiday nationwide in Canada. Why don't we do that here? Uh, you tell me. It's I a, love that. I love it too. And it's a long weekend. Everyone has it off. And it's literally so that you and your family can have an extra day together. It's Family it's Day. And it's and family doesn't have to be blood either. No. It can be, you choose your family. Exactly. Due to the mistake from management, however, the doors were left unlocked. Upon entering the empty store, several curious shoppers were confused by the lack of employees. So they didn't <laughs> even realize it was closed. Lack? Does that mean the lights were on? <laughs> oh my God. Though this would have been a perfect time to take advantage of the five-finger discount, mm. only mm. one customer reportedly left the store with groceries in hand. But not before he left some money on the counter. I was standing there trying to decide what to do and a guy comes out of the store with two packages of cherry tomatoes an anonymous eyewitness told Kingstonist. So I asked, hey buddy you just taking some tomatoes? <laughs> no, I took artistic license but that's how I imagine he felt, right? Yes. He said I left five dollars on the counter. Also artistic license. <laughs> the, custom, the customer then called Kingston police to the scene where they waited on site until management arrived just after 4pm. Staffers were surprised to find that nothing had been damaged or taken except for cherry tomatoes that had been overpaid for by the humble customer. The doors were open and we don't know what's to blame for that. I do. A bad employee. <laughs> but it... <laughs> But it appears that the store manager indicated nothing was seriously damaged or stolen, a police spokesperson said. Why were the police there? Well, after the guy aggressively assumed that someone was staring tomatoes, stealing tomatoes, he called the police so they could come mock it. Because I don't know if you know this, but there's a national holiday in Canada called Family Day. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but... They would have had to, <sighs> the police came to monitor it until they could get a hold of management. I got it. it. But that guy overpaid for his tomato. He's like, I just need these tomatoes. It's really sweet. And it is, that's, I mean, it is very Canadian of him. It's very, like, yeah. Honest. There's a different, it's not that people aren't respectful in other places, but overall, I will say this. I think there is a different uh, level of respect from citizen to citizen in Canada. Mm -hmm. And I really mean that. And if you haven't ever traveled there, you, you can see it. It's like Tampa. I always, one of the first examples that comes to mind is the woman is going down the street with a stroller mm -hmm. and is trying to get, a lot of the stores are older, they have steps up or step down. Mm -hmm. All the bathrooms in Canada always are in the basement of an establishment. Oh. I don't know why. One day I need to know why. But if you are like coming, I was walking with my sister-in-law and she had the baby and literally two men leapt out of their seats and run, it's snowing, run down. One of them opens the door. The other one grabs the front of the stroller and they and lifted her. the stroller up a flight of stairs and like people just that's nice I know that people help each other here too but it's just it's so innate there and mm -hmm. I don't know it's that's very lovely. it's it's really did refreshing. they call it a pram is that Canadian <laughs> no they Can don't you do a Canadian accent because you're great at accents <laughs> Uh, no, because I would just do a bad one that sounds like the guys from uh, Strange Brew. Oh, okay. The typical over Can you the do top. A French accent? Um, I mean, my French is pretty bad. On... I don't know. You said something French to me, and I just. Je me souviens. I will remember. It's on the Quebec license plate. Is it? Yes. On the Quebec license plate, it says, I will remember? Yes. What? It, that feels like a threat. Uh, it kind of is. <laughs> They're very angry that they are not their own country. Oh, yeah. You know, they've tried to secede from the nation of Canada oh, for gotcha. a very long time. And uh, it never passes, and I hope it never will. But that's actually how we ended up in the States, was when the separatist movement started. My dad's Your father family? was from Massachusetts, and he told my dad, you, you should get out of here now. Wow. Because things got bad there. And I didn't even realize. I was just talking about that recently. And I'm, I'm going to make this short. But there was like martial law declared <gasps> while we still lived in Montreal because there was a domestic terrorist group that was going crazy. Like when the separatist movement came about. And so now my dad is sending me a book um, to read about it because I had no idea. That's I was terrifying. a kid and we didn't learn about that in school here. That's for darn sure. No, we don't learn about Canada here. No, most people couldn't even tell you that Justin Trudeau is the... Oh, I could, but you want to know why? His sexy. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's the only reason. That's He's terrible cute, to admit. But, but you should look up his father, Pierre Trudeau, who was the prime minister at the time during the separatist movement. Is he even hotter? And he was a Quebecois, but he was... I'm sorry? Lib- he was a What's Quebecois. A What's a quoi? <laughs> a person from Quebec. No, Quebecian. And it's Quebec, not Quebec. He's Quebecian. Quebec. Quebecois. You made that up. <laughs> I did not. You have a fancy name for everything. <laughs> what do you call this pencil, Jessica? A graphite object. Stop it! <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> oh my god. You're so silly. <laughs> Hilarious. Oh my god. Okay, we should I move just on. Choked. I know you like literally coughed and got sick. Oh my god, pardon me. <laughs> Okay, we're going to move on to your rave. What'd you bring this week? Okay, you guys, um, the Oscars were recent, and one of the winners was for Best Short Documentary. It was called Period, End of Sentence, and it is in regards to menstruation Mm -hmm. and people's lack of resources and education worldwide. And this is an organization called Days for Girls, and they offer free dignified solution for lasting access to necessary items as well as important female-specific health education. Wow. So, nobody likes getting their period. Am I right, ladies? Mm -hmm. Unless you miss it and you didn't want to, and there's a reason. Okay. (laughs) But do you remember, I mean, when I was in middle school, they had a woman come to talk to us, like to talk to the whole, I don't know what grade we were in, seventh or eighth grade, about that in the history of menstruation. I'm not joking. And talking about, like, you know, before the invention of tampons and maxi pads, people would like wrap rags. a piece of bark with cotton or rags and yeah. things like that like ugh, i can't and even still, imagine there are some places where they're trying to get more education about menstruation um because women are considered foul and dirty when yes. it happens and they'll kick them out of their tribes and stuff while they're totally you know it's really sad uh yeah a lot of that has to do with a lot of religions different mm-hmm. religious groups mm-hmm. have feelings on that uh it's it's a thing people uh we bleed okay so but what what people take for granted also is that not only do they not have the proper hygiene products, this actually causes young women to have to miss school. Right. So you think about that and I can't even imagine having to miss school because you have your period. Perfectly natural. Yeah. Totally. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that this group does that I think is amazing, and again, we're certainly not advocating that everybody has to pay or pony up for every cause. We, no. we certainly can't. But again, when you see... What a huge difference such a little amount can make. For $10, this organization provides a Days for Girls kits that lasts for three years. Oh my gosh. So I'm going to assume they're getting huge donations from major companies. Yeah. And then for them to be able to put it together and then get it to various countries like Sub-Saharan Africa, parts of India where this stuff is just non-existent. Wow. $10 to give a girl three years. Um, That's amazing. And you know what? Even if you don't have $10, just even spreading the word. Yes. You know what? That's helpful. Totally. Mm -hmm. And uh, it says can keep her from missing up to three months of school and provide provide stronger education and a future. So I love this. And again, just the thought of somebody not having a, a basic necessity of life as a female is it's really something, hard to believe. Yeah, it's really something that's been overlooked. It's really interesting. Have you read articles about like how now some uh, erectile dysfunction things are being covered by insurance, at least in America? We're so messed up. Yes. But um, I think Viagra, Viagra is, co- I think yeah. is covered. But women have to buy their tampons and, and hygiene products yeah. every month. Like we have to out of our pocket medical totally. insurance. And this is something Same we can't with birth control. control. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And it doesn't matter why you're taking it. It's your right. Yeah. But it's sometimes so you don't get pregnant. Sometimes it's because you have a hormonal imbalance. Exactly. I, it, there's a million a reasons. Million. It, yeah. It's, well, I really love that. Tick, can you tell us again what it... Oh, yes. Uh, and their website is daysforgirls.org. Okay. That's really lovely. Yeah. I like that a lot. I Jessica. Dana. I think that's our show. Okay. Right? That this went so by we, in the blink of an eye. I know it always does. So don't talk on your speakerphone in public, right? Ever. Ever. And don't don't. don't uh, what was no. your? I just want to re. Oh, what was your rant? Don't hit someone's car and then just leave like nothing happened. Don't do that, guys. And then also, yay Canadians! Apparently, Jessica's lived there too. I sure have, eh? <laughs> 
<laughs> and check out the website for Say It Again. Daysforgirls.org. I love it. I love it. I enjoy you, Jessica. I enjoy you immensely. Um, Just real quick before we head on out, guys, want to give you ways to contact us. Please, please, please listen, subscribe, rate, review, yes. share us with your friends. We want to get out the bad and in with the good. You can contact us with your rants, your raves, your shout outs, whatever you want at the Rants and Raves podcast.com. That's our website. You can find us on Instagram at the Rants and Raves podcast. Uh, you can email us at the Rants and Raves podcast at gmail.com and whatever Twitter. We are so Whatever, angry about Twitter <laughs> at raves underscore the. That's so weird. It's so weird. Anyway, guys, hit us up, please. Tell us what you want to hear about. Tell us what aggravates you. Tell us what you love. We're gonna leave you with a point to ponder I this can't week. Wait. Decaf coffee. Why? Why? Ugh, I almost got ready to launch into. Okay, thanks everybody. <laughs> Bye. Bye.